Thank you. Thank you. Well, we've, we've had a, a many skilled speakers here today, and some of them have, uh, have, have described the activities and skills of our opponents and very thoroughly. And our opponents, our political opponents of freedom, liberty, and the Constitutional Republic that we cherish are formidable and uh, unprincipled, and they're tough to beat. But I'm sure, my, my own opinion, in fact, I'm certain, that I know what the ultimate outcome will be, and that is that we'll win. And the reason I think that is that every human being, especially certainly every American, is born, made by his creator, with a love of liberty, freedom, and the principles uh, embodied in our Constitutional Republic, as a part of his genetic makeup. Every human being yearns to be free. Now, some of us, some people, realize it more quickly than others. You see many of them here today, and thousands and thousands of other Oregonians are the same way. Others, a large, large part of our, our fellow men, don't realize it. It's our job, politically, to go out and, and awaken this in them. And our opponents have that in their genes too, but they also they manifest some of the more negative aspects of human nature, and we have to stop allowing them to affect our lives and our government. But it's clear that we're on a winning path. Look, there are 50, 50 pavilions over there. Every one of those is manned and caused by individuals that have decided to throw rocks at these people that have been wrecking our state and country. Some of them will win, some of them will lose, and everybody will make progress. In a war, you don't win all the battles. And if you happen to be in a losing battle, it may make a big difference. Matthew and I were at San Jacinto Monument uh, about a week or so ago, and that's in Texas. That's where Texans won their independence. And if any of you remember the history, I was raised in Texas. I have to remember the history. That's all they do in the schools. But at the Alamo, of course, uh, about uh, Santa Ana attacked with 500 fresh troops and slaughtered all the Texans. But when he got done, he had 4,000 instead of 5,000. Then he divided them in four groups. Part of them were chasing the Texas government, which is chasing all over the state. Another group went down to Goliad and defeated the Texans there, and they made the mistake of trusting him. They, they made an honorable surrender, and he slaughtered all of them. But uh, he divided his forces, and eventually a thousand of his men, and Sam Houston, who'd been running all over the place, uh, caught him, waited till the sun was in, eye, in his eyes one afternoon, and killed half of his thousand and captured the rest. There were still 3,000 fresh troops, but the problem was that Sam had captured Santa Ana himself. So he traded Santa Ana and his life for Texas, and that was the end of that. In the Revolutionary War, it was similar. But the point I'm making is that these people are formidable, and they're entrenched, and each of us, in our own way, has to decide what we will do uh, for our country to try to oppose them. In our case, our family uh, decided that as a public service, we would remove one of the poorer congressmen that we are, are blessed with. <laughs> And uh, he, he's still there, so we still have it to do. But the important thing is that, that the principles, the fundamentals of human nature are with us. And there are thousands, and it's like, if you run for office in this state, it's like walking into a movie. There are thousands and thousands and thousands of people you meet. Every one of them is somebody you'd love to have in your home for dinner. And those people won't be beaten because the characteristics that make them fine people are fundamental to all of our people. And as we work on this and gain, and you can see across the nation, all the gains that freedom and liberty are making, uh, we'll win this. We need leadership. And you've seen many aspects and many examples of that leadership here today. I probably shouldn't talk about him behind his back, and I didn't intend to, but I wanted to make an example of Lars Larson. So I'll go ahead anyway. You know, on his worst day, Lars Larson has 10 times the intellect, 100 times the talent, and 1,000 times the principles of the entire Democrat 
legation, federal and state, for this entire country. And well, just with men like that, uh, the people can do to get the job done. There's a question. Each of us has to ask himself a question, and that is, why should we be involved in this? Most of people here have answered that question, or you wouldn't be here. Why are we involved in this? Well, one is that we have an obligation, because we have the great blessing of living in this country and in this state, and we need to give something back when that greatness and that opportunity is challenged. So every, everyone should try in his own way, some small way, we're trying in our little small way, to be a part of the solution of this. That's a public service we owe to the great blessing we have. That's a selfless reason, but there's also a selfish reason. And that is, we are winning, they are winning, we're winning our freedom back, and uh, I think it'd be fun to be able to tell our children, our grandchildren, some of us, even luckily our great-grandchildren, that we were here when we took our country back. So I, I, uh, this is fabulous. If you look across our country and if you compare things with the way we were just a few years ago, you can see the message of liberty and freedom in our constitutional republic is rising and becoming stronger and stronger and stronger. And that will continue, and of course is being helped along by our opponents who are making, <laughs> making mistakes all the time. And I, I don't think there's any question about how this will come out. I don't know how you feel about it, but that's what we think. And we want to be a small part of it, so we do a little thing and everybody else does something. And each of those people over there are fighting on one particular cause or another. Uh, Ames Cartwright gives us this opportunity to meet together, which is a, a wonderful privilege in its own right. But uh, you, you can't lose this. You can't lose it because it's built into the human nature not to live the way our opponents want us to live. So that's, that's the message I brought today. And I, I hope you will, I'm sure you all share it one way or another. We'll win. And you are winning. Don't, don't ever forget that. You're winning. The faster we win, the less suffering our people will have. But we're winning. I'll leave one. I, I just thought of one more thing, I guess. I hope you won't mind. I do research. I do fundamental research. I, my colleagues, my son's back there, Noah and Matthew, and, and many colleagues over the years, we do scientific research. And we do research in two areas. One is fundamental research, biochemistry, in our case, protein chemistry. It's an esoteric subject, and we try to learn more and more about how living things function at the molecular level. And we also do medical research. Now, in basic research, you hope your competitor doesn't see things before you see them. If you have an insight, you keep it secret, you go in the laboratory, you work very hard, you publish. It's a competitive atmosphere in which you hope that the scientists who are working in the same field won't see things as soon as you see them, so that you can public first, and you know, it's a co competition. In medicine, it's entirely different. In medical research, you hope your opponent will wipe you out. Because if he sees something first, that can be measured in quality, quantity, and length of human life. And that's the way this political contest is. If w each of us, if we're able to make a contribution, that's wonderful. And if someone else leaps in and does a better job, that's a good thing, because it means a very serious human problem is solved sooner. And I, think, I haven't, don't think I've met anybody here or anybody in Oregon yet that doesn't share that ethic. And that's another reason we're going to win. Thank you.